The following podcast is a next level production. What, what the hell is this? Your punishment. And when you're done here, you're going to clean every room on Chet's list to pay for this shit, okay? Mm. And mm. your Uncle Klaus is going to watch over you. What? Why, you do it? Why can't you do it? Because I have to babysit Luther in case Allison pops off again. Hey, don't worry. You two have tons in common. No, we don't. You're like what? Being a pain in my ass. Yeah, well, you should eat shit. That. Heard that. Hey, Powers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about the Umbrella Academy Season 3. So this week we are focusing on Episode 4, Kugel Blitz. So uh, that's uh, Season 3, Episode 4, Kugel Blitz, which is very interesting, too, because of the name. But we'll get into that when we talk about the episode, too, because we do get a description from Five about that later on. So, Steve, uh, why don't you just let us know the synopsis of this particular episode? Okay, the synopsis for this episode is uh, pretty simple. It's got all the storylines there. Luther and Sloan hatch a plan to end the war between the families. Victor reconnects with someone from the past. Five has an unsettling encounter. Hmm. This was a lot of setup. Like, there was a lot of setup. There in was. This episode. It felt like it was just a lot of an information drop. Um, I a mean, lot I liked of foreshadowing it. I, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I didn't like it. I mean, I liked it. It's just it, it's. It, I very much, especially having watched the entire season, you know, binge it a, a few weeks ago, knowing where it's headed. This is kind of like I'm I'm seeing all the things that are being set up, and so that was kind of cool. Yeah, it, I, I it was very cool. But the synopsis itself, if you think, is very discreet, very short. Yeah, but. As you watch it, you you do see everything unfold, which I really do appreciate. And my initial thoughts were I enjoyed it because it, from the beginning to the end, you start to realize what was going on, why Harlan was there, because obviously we find out in the very beginning that's Harlan. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end, we understand why the Umbrella Academy is where they're at, but also a lot of uh, awakenings too within the uh, the episode uh, regarding some of our favorite characters, you know, uh, Diego, mm-hmm. Allison, Luther himself too, and Klaus, which is pretty funny. Yeah, and we we get a lot of these things, and you know, and then we have uh, Victor finding out about Harlan and what his you know, transpired and Mm -hmm. why everything happened the way it did. And then now from this episode on, if you think about it, it's how they have to deal with all the encounters and everything that's going on. Uh, Five himself finds out who was, who actually created the, the time. What do they call it? The time collective. Commission. They just call commission. it commission. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. I don't think it was time commission. I think they always, it might've been time commission. I don't remember now that you say that, but they always just called it the commission. Yeah. They, I, they just, I, yeah so. It is a time commission if you think about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And yeah, I was just like, my mouth just dropped for the third time after I watching mm-hmm. it going, wow, that's a lot to really ingest at this point, you know, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Was, this was a lot. There was a lot to take in, a lot of information, but it was really good storytelling. There was a lot that they showed us. Um, mm-hmm. they, they, I mean, they told us a lot too, but that we got to see a lot as well, and and, and we got to find out. Yeah, we'll we'll get into it when we get to our highlights because I, I don't want to get too deep into <laughs> into the, the specifics. But I just it, there was a lot of setup, and there's some really cool stuff going on that I, I can't wait to see as it progresses through the the rest of the season. Well, that's that's the whole point. This is like basically what we were waiting for, and this was the episode to show us exactly where they're at and what they have to do. Mm-hmm. And wow, <laughs> it's a lot to really to take in. So. uh Overall highlights, uh, starting with you, what was your first highlight that you liked? 
I want to I want to point out I want to talk about Allison for a minute and, mm-hmm. and the, this darker road that she keeps going on going down yes. and some interesting things about her power you know she rumors Sloane and Sloane you know she's bleeding she's almost killed because she it's not that she's trying to lie she doesn't know and I I I, I don't understand why I don't know isn't an appropriate answer for the question like if she asks you a question and you li- literally don't know you know what it where it is apparently that it hurts be, you yeah that should but that should be a that's a correct answer she's not lying she doesn't know where it is but i guess maybe the, the power works that you're holding back the last no i don't i don't know I, that was the only thing that kind of got me with with her power was maybe it's it, it affects her negatively because she's holding back that they they no i mean they don't know they didn't see lila steal mm-hmm. the, the briefcase so they don't know who took it they don't know where it is they don't know you know but i i thought it was uh uh interesting you know uh diego gives her the side eye i really love actors i started to really notice actors in the side eye acting that <laughs> is really good some people have very expressive eyes that uh, uh you know she <laughs> pours the liquor into the slushy and then and we're going to find out in the next episode what they did at that redneck bar uh or yeah i think it's later in this episode or no uh, in the next episode it's the next one yeah we find out yeah. what happened in, in the bar bar there so you know we're we're seeing this slow not not slow <laughs> uh this this quick dark progression of allison she's drinking more and, and all that so i really i just really like the way they handled that and the way diego is is kind of feeding into it in a way and we're going to find out more about that as we we go along the, the season but yeah it was uh, uh allison that's my first my first point just you know where she's at yeah. what she's doing uh we're gonna you know towards the when we get to the end of the season and again this is spoiler full for the whole season remember we're mm-hmm. gonna get to to the end of the season where she's gonna develop the power the same as she did in season two where she actually doesn't even have to say anything Mm. And she forces people to 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 tell her what's what she wants to know. So it's it's going to be interesting to see that play out. It's her learning how to use her abilities mm-hmm. more and more. Also, on top of that, more of an awakening for her of what she had to subject herself to because when she was stuck in what the sixties, and then mm-hmm. she had that relationship with that man. Uh, then we have to we deal with her dealing with not having her daughter Mm -hmm. because she talks about that to Diego and oh wow you know you know I guess Dr. Fuego doesn't help her out too much (laughs) no (laughs) but you know not not to coin a phrase but I thought that was pretty cool uh, yeah that he thinks of himself as doctor he goes oh you're not exactly what used to be you used to be very timid you held back now you're forthright and you're doing Mm -hmm. She's very aggressive, mm-hmm. and I think that has to do with her, like her wanting to be a little bit more aggressive mm-hmm. and being part of this group and to get more information and to figure things out. And whereas in the past she was always holding back, yeah. and now she's coming into her own, and I, I think that's great too. But also we we get to see Diego, and you say the side eyes too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, think about it with him and his son, quote unquote. <laughs> him saying, "Go upstairs," and he's like, "Go oh, with Uncle Klaus and do all this cool stuff." Yeah, and he gets that hug. He gets that hug from Stanley because Stanley realizes that he actually does care about him. There, there is something yeah. in there that isn't caring because you know he threw him behind that bar, told him to, to try to get him to safety, and so it, it's it, we're starting to see the caring side of Diego towards Stanley. And Diego is growing as a person, I think, and mm-hmm. that. That is what really touched me about this because it shows that Diego wants to be a father, but little does he know he's not the father. <laughs> so it's a Mari Povich kind of <laughs> episode in some way, but he doesn't know it just yet. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to that episode, but I, I mm-hmm. thought it was pretty cool. But yeah, the, I, I just love that we, we just we start to see these characters grow. We see Luther and his love of Sloan. And how he's very protective of her against Allison, too, who he's with before and had this crush, infatuation, 
were they ever together? That 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 was my concern. I I couldn't remember. Uh, him and Allison. Yeah, he and Allison. I had sex. Oh, okay. In in, in season one, like they yeah. had that whole dancing scene where they were. Oh yes. And okay. and the, the and the music was going, and I believe they had they had sex, and they were leaning towards having a relationship, and then when they if I remember correctly, when they landed in the sixties, all in separate. You know, they landed in the sixties all at separate times. Yes. So by the time he he ca- caught up to her or she caught up to him, whichever way it was, I don't remember. She was already married to that other guy, and yeah, she and had, had moved life. on. Yeah, yeah had, a, had a life. She had moved on, and, and so that's that's where their relationship. And that's why it's funny. I have this as one of my my discussion points as well. I have part of their their uh, their conversation, his and him and Sloan's conversation when we get to quotes. But Our- he 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 tells her one of the things he tells her during this whole conversation is that he hasn't had any romance in his life except family. And I went, that's technically true. You loved your. Family. adopted sister so <laughs> you're not li- he's not lying that he hasn't had an, anyone else to love or hasn't had a romantic relationship with anybody else but it's still he's not making like i don't think sloan's gonna take it that way and of course i don't know if the story is ever even going to reference that because it was so long ago yeah and so much has happened since then they may never even reference that he and allison had a thing yeah i, I think that's kind of like hidden or underlining and that's mm-hmm. about it yeah yeah i it, it's it's a sad thing that happened but <laughs> or happy thing for luther but mm-hmm. you know but he was so happy when he got together with sloan you and i both talked about this the last episode which is funny but uh yeah I, it's it, it's a weird situation with the with these kids because they yeah. grew up together and you know they were all adopted by hargreaves and it's such a weird situation that they're in. Mm-hmm. And then now he's found something that he feels very passionate about, which is Sloan. Mm-hmm. And then Allison retaliates and attacks because basically I think in her mind, she knows <laughs> it's like, Oh, you were with her. <laughs> it's like, yes, eh, could be. Yeah. I, I don't know. Couldn't put, wouldn't put it past her. Remember she's still focused on getting her daughter and her husband back. Yes. So she, I don't think she's caring about Luther's romantic entanglements, but no, it, it no, be, no. It could be under the under the, the line there, like you said. It's an undertone. Yeah. The one thing I wanted to talk about was that whole intro got me with Harlan and what he and his mom had to deal with. And of course you had the song House of the Rising Sun by the animals playing. Mm-hmm. That whole intro was so perfect. It was a great soundtrack to show pretty much what he was dealing with over the years after they had left because Vanya had been gone and his mother left and then took Harlan out to have a life. Mm -hmm. But there was bullying and him accidentally uh, killing a rabbit in front of one of her lovers. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, That they have to move and just the, I didn't, I wish I had jotted down all the different years Oh, I, to... I wish I did too, but I didn't. But yeah, and then you see him. He, uh, I guess when he was bullied, bullied at school, mm-hmm. he attacked the kids, and I don't know if they were dead or they were hurt. I th- on the third watch, I was sure that I saw at least one or two of them moving around. So I, th- oh, okay. I don't think he killed any of them. I think he just it was just uh, yeah. I, I think they were alive at, at least a few of them because I did see some of them moving around. So. Yeah, and then we move on, and then him having to deal with his mother have dying of cancer at that point, mm-hmm. and then within that hospital scene, you see his power showing through, and you see the headphones with the Walkman, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, very different from Peter Quill from you know Guardians of the Galaxy, but he he uses that to suppress his issues, but at this point, he was so emotionally eruptive at this point and his powers just came through and destroyed everything within that hospital including the people that were there that were working and i just saw how wow this is so foreshadowing and what we're going to find out at the very end of the episode and basically uh then you know we cut to the unfolding of that whole that lobby scene where he mm-hmm. you know the spouse were there i did take note when before that cold open finished when we get that whole montage of them moving it does mm-hmm. show it shows the date that his mother died oh. and so when we get to the end of the episode we're going to confirm that 
but it does show because I went back and, and watched it again a couple of days ago just to make sure I was I knew what was going on. And they do show us in that opening scene that his mother dies on October, whatever it was, October 1st, 1989. Yes. So, yeah, which you, is you, spoilers to everybody. If you didn't watch Umbrella Academy seasons one, two and three, that's when all of them were born. You know, that, right. that's literally the, the day that they were all supposed to be born. And we could we could skip to that. We could skip to that right now and just and talk about it a little sure. bit. Because because, you know, that's the end of the episode, obviously, is him finding those articles. And I was a little confused because here's what confused me. All right. That book, when when Klaus got that book from the woman and he's going through the articles, it looked to me like there was more deaths than just their six mothers mm -hmm. but then the indication seems like that it was just their six mothers so i don't know and i we didn't get any confirmation because remember we have this confusion about the number of them because season one there were 44 of them season three there's only 27 or 40, 43 of them uh and then in season three there's only 27 mm -hmm. of them and obviously he didn't kill Ben's mother because he didn't know about Ben in hmm. season two. So I'm thinking that the only ones he killed were those six. And I don't know how he was able to focus his power because, you know, we see all the deaths of the six mothers. Uh, my thought about that, honestly, think about it. He was in presence of them when he was a child. So he mm -hmm. knew them. He saw their faces. Okay, so yeah, he, he could focus on yeah. He could okay. focus on them, who they were, and their family, or their parents, or their mother at that point. Okay, and and I, that's my rationalization of this. You know, yeah, I might yeah. be thinking outside the box, ladies and gentlemen, but you know, my thought is like, okay, so he encountered Diego, he encountered Luther, he encountered uh, five, Vanya. Uh, Vanya. Klaus, Vanya, mm -hmm. all of them. Just the six, not the only one he wouldn't have seen was and Ben because Ben hadn't manifested by the time. Is remember Ben doesn't manifest in front of him. Ben doesn't manifest until they're at Dealey Plaza. Yes, which is, or, or there, he manifests at Dealey Plaza. I don't think he's with them at the farm. No, he's not. So, so the, he didn't know about Ben. So that's the only mother. I'm assuming that's why we got that's to see why he's in the birth. sparrow. Right, I and mean, we saw his birth in season one because yes. he actually was born. I'm sorry, season, episode one of season three, we yes. see his birth because he actually was born in this world. That's why six. they we have the sparrows now, mm -hmm. and then we have these these new characters. And yeah. unfortunately, we lost two at this point. Actually, yeah. three <laughs> if you count one. But oh yeah, if you count Marcus, right? If you yeah, count Marcus, yeah, because yeah. uh, we've lost. Those, those Jamie three. And, and Alfonso. Alfonso. I did have a note. I did have a note about this because remember we had some confusing questions about his power and about his how it, it all worked. And I guess we don't need to know now. So yeah, because he's gone. So <laughs> exactly, we don't have to worry about it. We have to wonder about it anymore. But that was we did had discussed that in the last episode when that whole fight between he and Diego and that piece of him flies off and he's like, yeah, that happens sometimes. And we're like, what? What is that about? You know? So, uh, but again, we don't have to worry about it now. So. There you go. There's one of my notes gone. Awesome. Cool. Uh, did you have any other highlights? Um, yeah, I've got a couple more that we haven't discussed yet. Um, I thought it was interesting that the Sparrows, when they come back to their academy, the four uh, that are left, is it? Wait. Yeah, the four that are left alive, uh, Chris, Ben, or the three, I guess, because Sloan stated the thing. So it was, it was uh, Chris, Ben, and Faye. They come back to the Sparrow Academy and they're just they're just blaming each other about, you know, like Faye's like, oh, you're a bad leader. Obviously, that's why you were never number one. And he goes, no, it's because you're a bad number two. And Chris agrees with him. And so they walk away. And so Faye walks away. I just thought it was interesting that it was one of those things that we saw something very close happen with uh, the, the Umbrella Academy when they had their first loss. They kind of imploded. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, I think the same thing happened here. They've never really suffered a loss, so they kind of imploded on it. Um, and then also we get a glimpse of Reginald, and they don't realize that he's starting to wake up. Because remember, he has some solid things he says about what they should do. And then he gives, I believe, he gave Ben the plan that not to just get Sloan back, but to ask for Harlan. We want you to bring us Harlan. 
also. We want you to bring us the man that killed our brother and sister. So I think that all I think that all came from Reginald, not Ben. Oh, I think so too. And uh, yeah, I, I, you actually brought up a subject that I wanted to talk about too. That was part mm-hmm. of my highlights. Uh, Ben's issue with being the new number one. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I love how he, he states to Faye that she is. Uh, I'm going to say crappy, mm-hmm. a crappy number two. Yeah. You know, he uses other words, but then, uh, we get Hargreaves coming into his own and you kind of just stated that it's like, he literally, because Klaus literally told him how to hide the meds. Mm -hmm. So now he's weaning off the meds. So he's able to manipulate and do what he needs to do with the sparrows at this point and to get what he wants. And we're, we're, we're seeing the mischievous, uh, alien inside of him. To do what he needs to do for his own well-being or mm-hmm. his ultimate goal, and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's it, to me, it's one of those things. Like it's kind of slight, but you mm-hmm. get it, and we're like, <gasps> <gasps> yeah. If you watched it completely, you realize right. then after rewatching, going, oh, that's yeah. When now it we happened. start to see the subtle, yeah, the subtle hints of him starting to wake up, starting to come out of his drug induced you know kind of coma that they had him in i mean it's a waking coma but still they kind of had him in this drug induced state he's starting to come out of that and by the end of the season we're going to find out what his real end game was oh yeah uh, that he, we didn't even see that in season one or no. season yeah we didn't even see that end game in season one we so it's it's uh, going to be interesting to see again re-watching these it's, it's kind of fun re-watching them knowing what's going to happen he's a master manipulator and they're saying that the well news 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 mm-hmm. uh that what the next season's going to be the last season for the I, I believe Academy. that's yeah i believe that's what they have informed so, so i'm i you know i've always said and other people other podcasters in our group have said the same thing i think it's better for them to yeah. announce beforehand it before they even you know they're in production hopefully hopefully they knew before they started producing it so they could work toward an ending so yeah and it's nice to book end the actual series mm-hmm. itself too. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, honestly, we, we get a lot, uh, they're doing that with stranger things as well mm-hmm. as right. uh Rima and Paker covering. But of course, everybody's like, we don't want it to end. I'm like, well, these kids have to grow up. Yeah. At this yeah point. Let it, let it in, let them have it, give it an ending. I think that's, I think that's, you know, the thing, the same thing with Snowpiercer, the next season has been announced that it's the last season. Exactly. So. Yeah. And honestly, they should let it end as is. So, uh, mm-hmm. with Snowpiercer, I'm still trying to work on Ed Harris, <laughs> <laughs> trying to work you with should. his people you should. so that we, we could talk about the movie. So, yeah, I've got a couple more things. Do you have anything else on your notes or highlights? Oh, yes, I definitely do. (laughs) Well, Five being an essential person with him and Lila going back to the Time Commission. Yeah. In the future. That was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A little foreshadowing once we get in the room with him and Lila, he finds himself older. Mm -hmm. And he's like on an iron lung or something, but apparently they're in a safe place where anybody could be in there at that point and it wouldn't affect anything. It's funny though. I'll, I, I'm going to admit this, and I, I can't. Obviously, we weren't podcasting blind on this one. But when I I did when we watched it the first time, yeah. When he stumbles into that hallway and he starts sweating and yep. he farts and she <laughs> just looks at him, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, mm, yeah, he's in that room. Whoever this whoever this VIP is that was told to be rushed to this room. If this happened, it's five. I, said, I don't know what version of five yeah, it's exactly, going to be. Exactly, right? <laughs> but uh, as soon as he started having that, uh, link, I got it here in my notes, uh, the paradox psychosis, I was like, yep, he's going to meet an older version of himself in there. Of course, I didn't expect it to be a one armed older version of himself. Mm. But, uh, you know. <laughs> um, I think this is a, a different version because we do, if you look, Five at one point lost his arm. You're right. This was a, the the guy in the iron lung has got a missing arm. But you know, five, he does something that's very important because really for him, it's all about not having paradoxes. So as soon as he saw the tattoo mm-hmm. on the guy's chest, he knew he was going to figure out where that tattoo came from. And we know, I believe it's the next episode, or it might be the episode after that. I'm pretty sure it's the next episode. Well, I I think it's two episodes before he actually gets the tattoo. Mm-hmm. 
but uh, it's the end of the next episode where we meet who's going to give him the tattoo. Exactly. So he's going to do everything he can to make sure that all the versions of him line up. But remember, that's what the guy said when he was in the lung. He said he designed this room so that any version of them could be in there at one time. I, I think the Umbrella Academy, uh, and this is kind of inside baseball kind of thing. I think the Umbrella Academy plot wise works the timeline not like a multiverse but works it like the back to the future where there's one timeline and if you do something that changes yeah, branches that, yeah that whole time but that whole time that all the timeline goes away and mm -hmm. a new one timeline is created and so you know five's gonna do everything he can to maintain the no paradoxes so yeah that's why he cuts that tattoo off there at the end which is just sick yeah and and lila keeps poking him Big time throughout so, the episode, too. I loved her in this episode. She's I just, miss you. She, that's yeah, weird. That's weird. I had that in my quotes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had that in my quotes. Bye. I miss you. That's weird. And then, you know, of course, then when they're in the in the thing, she's like, you're a company man. You're literally can't live without this building. <laughs> exactly. <know? laughs> literally, because he was the creator. And we yeah. find out from him, his older self, that he created the Time Commission. Yeah. And that's the reason why. And even so, it's still in chaos because regardless of the paradox, the grandfather paradox, they still, it, it's still crumbling. And he gets to see everybody dusted or whatever it is. And that's why it would make sense that the time commission would be one of the first things that went away when he was never born. Yes. You know, because and they, they rushed this guy obviously to this room before the pair the, the Kugelitz got to him, you know. But by the way, I think they say this in the in the episode. I didn't write it, I didn't write it in my notes, but Kugelblitz literally means a ball of lightning. A ball of flight, yeah, a ball of flame or a ball of lightning. A ball so, of lightning, um, a kinky black uh, hole, according to Lila. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I this this was a whole great scene. I just loved what they were doing with it. I so. love this scene because it's like, ah, oh, you're you're seeing your older self and you're mm -hmm. figuring this out and what's going on within the actual episode or what's going on within yourself in the future and yeah. why everything is happening the way it is. And he basically states oblivion. You know, he, does. he says oblivion. And I, I do remember I did listen to TV podcast industries. There's of the first two, two or three episodes. I think I think I've got all of them mm -hmm. now. And in the comic book, instead of it like in this one, it's the Hotel Obsidian. Yes. But in the comic book, it actually is Hotel Oblivion. Like they're very blatant about that. Yeah, that the, hotel. The comics will be blatant about it and say, yeah, yeah the, it's oblivion. The show is being a little more subtle, you know. So this yeah. is the first time we've heard this word, or this isn't the first time we've heard this word oblivion, because I think Reginald said it in one of the earlier episodes. He said something about oblivion. Yes, he did. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> we haven't talked about Klaus and Stanley yet. Oh, Klaus. <laughs> he was supposed to be the, the fun uncle. <laughs> Klaus. I loved it, but he he's like he's like okay, you can, you can keep one thing, you know, or and you can keep like, the panties. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. And I have in my notes. This is how I wrote it in my notes. That Klaus and Stanley, it's all fun and games until someone gets shot with a spear gun. <laughs> so, <laughs> and of course, we're going to find out how important that is. What that yeah, means, exactly, we, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I loved it. We we again we see the 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 white buffalo room, and yes. he's like the white buffalo. And we had just you know, and they flash back to him seeing that porch, that uh, painting on the wall of the white buffalo, and so he knows this is an important room, mm. you know. So I, I just love their whole interaction and everything they had going on. Oh, and Stanley plays Plinko. He does. He comes in Plinko. <laughs> yep. And uh, that, you know, uh, for for those of you who are, are not a part of our friends in the Zed Heads universe from uh, Jason Cabassi's, uh Walking Dead cast, when we did uh, this Patreon group, we would always talk about Plinko. Because mm -hmm. literally, th when we play golf with your friends, there are certain things that are like, in golf with your friends, it's like Plinko. <laughs> mm. It's like, and that was the first thing that came up in my head. I thought nice. it was hilarious. But I was just like, but Plinko comes into play later on too within the mm -hmm. season if yeah. you think about it yeah so the only other note i've got or a couple of notes i've got is the the logos were on the tiles on the floor 
when yeah. we see Jamie and Alfonso's bodies, that's where we see the logos. And then I didn't pick up on it. I don't know why I didn't pick up on it until the third watch, but the chairs in that room mm-hmm. where, where old uh, Ben is, old five is, are they're the men in black egg chairs from the first men in black movie. Oh, Remember that they were setting in to take their test. And then he was, pulls it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I didn't notice the connection until this third watch. I was like, Hey, those chairs, why are those chairs look familiar to me? Like, oh, they're the men in black chairs. So, well, there's also something else though that you didn't really pay attention to. Apparently there is the shining rug all over the wallpaper within Harlan's room in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but green yeah. now. That mm. is amazing. I'm like, wow. So they're kind of like using horror Easter eggs from like Stephen King mm-hmm. now, yeah, a- inclusive yeah. into the show. And it's like, whoa, that's a mind bender. Very cool. Well, do you have any other notes that we haven't talked about yet? Well, then that ending, you know, uh, that's the finality of it. Uh, the, the finally finding out what happened to all the Umbrella's mothers due to Harlan's explosive moment with yep. his mother passing away. Now, was finding that- out that Harlan that Harlan killed their mothers, and and we're going to find out in the future. Victor's going to tell him, make sure you don't tell anybody. But of course, they're going to figure it out. Of course, they're yeah. going to figure it out. But, exactly. Uh, yeah, I thought that was that was a moment that he had between he and Victor when he's holding those articles, and he's like. He's like, your mother's died on the same day my mother died, Mm -hmm. you know? And so then she looks at him and she realizes without him and, or he grabs hold of her and they, they experience that memory Mm -hmm. together of him sending out that sonic wave. So very cool. Uh, The only quote I have that we haven't used yet is the one that I talked about earlier, the conversation between Sloan and Luther where Sloan says, uh, or yeah, yeah, Sloan says, I hate your family. And Luther says, cool, I'm not a big fan of yours. And then Sloan asked, were you part of it? And he says, what? And she says, ambiging us with Superman's grandpa. And <laughs> I love that line, ambushing us with Superman's grandpa. And then the, the, re- the response from Luther is, Sloan, my family can't decide whether to put mushrooms on a pizza. I have <laughs> no idea who that old guy is. <laughs> he just showed up. I love it though. My family can't even decide to take to put mushrooms on a pizza. <laughs> you think they're gonna let? And plus, in the earlier episodes, we know that they never tell him the plan. Yeah, because you know? Ben's like, "How are you number one?" If they don't tell you the plan, well, we're kind of disorganized over there. You know? uh, it is so. true. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a few. Okay. Uh, first off, one from Klaus saying, "Heavens to Betsy's." What did you do? Did Victor do go full carry again? Yeah. And at the in the front of the lobby. Yep. The next one would be five saying, This is bigger than the timeline line, Lila. Uh Lila was like, What's bigger than the timeline? And five goes, The entire universe? And Lila goes, Yeah. <laughs> five goes, The missing dogs, people. It's the opposite of the Big Bang. Instead of the universe collapsing in on itself, and Lila like retorts going, like a prolapsing rectum. And he goes, <laughs> yeah. that's a weird analogy, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the last one I would have would be five saying, why can't I escape this hellhole? And Lila says, this is foreshadowing mm-hmm. because you love it, which is very true. Yeah. Is this the, was this the episode where his response was, why does everybody think I, I love apocalypses? I don't love apocalypses. Yeah. He says something like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't love, apo- I don't live for an apocalypse. So he, he loves the idea of the extremism, I think. And that's really what. Yeah. And it's also, if you think about it, it's why it makes sense that he would create the time commission because he's obsessed with making sure there's no paradoxes. Exactly. And we can, we can see the setup for him is this exact moment that I, and we don't get it. Maybe we'll get it in the next episode, but you know, they do solve the whole thing, but then of course time goes out of whack anyway. Uh, but I would love to have seen that story, the story of, because I would bet this is the reason why he set up the time commission. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he had to set up the time commission because he was the one who set it up. It's a, you know, cause he knows that he's the one that set it up. So he has to set it up. It's kind of like the whole Bill and Ted thing where they're like, well, we must have won because we went back and did all this, but we haven't done it yet, but we're going to do it. Well, but do we have to do it now that we've already done it? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Right. But we still have to do it. Yeah. But the funny thing about five, all right, this is my analysis of him. He's obsessive Mm -hmm. compulsive. Absolutely. He's very obsessive compulsive and getting order out of chaos, but Mm -hmm. he creates more chaos with his order. 
And that's yeah. really the reason why. And I wouldn't be surprised, and this is me being fortuitous uh, or foreshadowing for season what? Four? Season four, five will be the one that has to die at the end. I wouldn't be no, surprised. No, he can't, he can't die because we saw him die. So we know how he dies. He's going to no, die in no, the that, that was one version of him. A one-armed version of him. Mm. So okay. we'll see. We'll see. We'll I, see. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I like I said, his he's all about not creating paradoxes, and and the way to end that would be to end five. And that that's just my thought. But you know, you, you could. Okay, tell I'm me not I'm tracking crazy. with that. But that's fine. No, I, 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 I'm just not tracking. <laughs> I'm not tracking with the the logic of it. But it you know could happen. These writers are good. So yeah, they are. They're they're great. All right. Well, with notes. Uh. Well. Obviously, Harlan can talk now. <laughs> right, right. And and you could tell Victor or Vanya, or formerly Vanya, wants to help Harlan and wants to help him. And we see that in later episodes, too, which mm -hmm. is amazing. And they kind of help each other at that point. Yeah. Yep. Anything from you? Nope, that's it. I covered all mine. Well, uh, let, let's talk about Harlan. So, uh, he seems to have tinnitus or effects like that because he feels like it feels like a tuning fork in his head. Yeah. He said he can, that's what, when, when Victor says, well, how did you find us? And he says, whenever one of you appear, I can just find you. And I'm wondering if he means the six of them, he must not mean the six of them. He must mean any of the, any the of them that yes. were born. He says, whenever I get close to any of you, I can feel you and I'm drawn to you. So, yeah, again, it, it, that was an interesting line that I hope isn't just a throwaway line. But, yeah. well, actually, it does end up being a throwaway because we really don't learn anything more about that down the road. Because we're still not clear on this whole numbers thing, why it's 27 instead of 44 or yeah. whatever it was. And, you know, again, I go back and forth with how many of the mothers did he kill. But he must have only killed the six. Must have only killed I, six. I th I'm thinking that's literally what it was. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, that was it for all my notes and my quotes. Mm -hmm. So uh, on to news, but we already kind of spoiled that, mm -hmm. saying that uh, we're getting a, a, a season, uh, what? Season five? four. Four. Season four, because this is season three. This is still season three. Oh, uh, well, I, so I keep thinking it's more. I don't <laughs> know why. <laughs> no, Maybe because we've been doing this so long. Well, and Stranger Things, Stranger Things, it gets weird in my mind, too, because I forget the season. We just had season four of Stranger Things. So season five is going to be their last season. So that's what it, that's why it's confusing in your head, because you're, you're thinking Stranger Things and you're. Yeah, thinking, well, yeah, that's what I think. Strange. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah, no, we're still season three here. And I think, like you said, I'm pretty sure they've only picked them up for one more season. And that's going to be the last the last well, season. Uh, hopefully they'll will settle the last season with a blast. I think so. I hope so. I hope so, too. We'll see. Uh, I didn't see any feedback. Nah. We got no emails, no feedback. Okay. That's about it. Uh, we already talked yeah. about, you know, according to Variety, Umbrella Academy had been renewed for a fourth seat and final season. So mm -hmm. uh, that's according to Comic News. Uh podcast recommendations at the moment i just uh, go back to uh, a couple of ones that i've talked about before smartless is is still really good and those guys love those guys will arnett jason bateman thank you jason bateman and then the guy from will and grace oh yes guy. yeah they're doing smartless and, and obviously i i love that one because you can just pick and choose which ones you want to listen to they they interview different celebrity guests every week and they're really cool i'm still following talkville which is the Tom Welling. Oh, that was mine. <laughs> uh, oh, you got it. Uh, go ahead. Talk about it. No, no. Talkville is amazing because you got uh, Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum talking about, and they're rewatching the first season of Smallville and they're going episodically. So yeah. they're, they're going about their, their memories about Smallville. And I think that's amazing. I got way ahead of him on my binge, so I'm gonna have to go back. <laughs> I'm like already, I'm like in season eight now because I'm just binging Smallville. I just love it so much. But you know, one of the things about that that podcast that we haven't talked about before is they have a producer on there, Ryan, who has never seen the show, and so he's coming into it just completely. Fresh? He's never watched the show wow. before. Yeah, fresh. And uh, at the end of every episode, or tor towards the end of every episode, what they do is they have Ryan pick like three scenes. And yeah. then they then they have to try to choose which one was his favorite. 
So it's it's kind of interesting to hear hear him pick scenes it and is. How, they're, yeah. how they're able to tell which one was his favorite. <laughs> so I just like I like hearing that. Awesome. And apparently they all dress in black. Yeah, I've never it, watched it on I've never watched it on YouTube though. So me I neither. <laughs> I, I just listened to it on podcasts and I think yeah. it's pretty cool. As far as YouTube recommendations, uh Grim Life Collective with Michael and Jessica, they're continuing their uh convention circuit as it goes, as well as their uh creepy events that, that they go to, you know, like cemeteries and everything else and uh murder scenes. So check them out. As well as Christopher Nelson and Sean Clark with the thing with two heads. So my suggestion, the thing with two heads. There you go. I don't have a YouTube this week. I didn't do a YouTube dive this week, so that's okay. <laughs> uh, well, to submit your feedback, obviously we can be heard on whatever pod, your favorite podcast player of choice, whether that be Spotify, Google play, Apple podcast, or whatever podcast you choose. Uh, give us a shout, give us a review on there. We'll give you a shout out on the on the podcast, and we'd love to hear from you on any of those platforms. And we'd like you to check out our website. Yes, it's still in construction. Sorry, I had to take a leave of absence. I had to take up a lot of work at work, so I haven't been able to do it like I wanted and planned to. So uh, that would be panels to pixels podcast.com. I'm hoping within the next five to six weeks, I could actually get something up and running. So with all the the feeds and where you could actually check us out and all the cool stuff with our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So check that out on panels to pixels podcast.com. We have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And uh, hopefully we'll start getting uh, feedback posts put up there again. We, I've been slacking on doing that. So that's nah, okay, dude. I understand. We could also be found on Twitter, which would be at panels the number two pixels. So panels, the number two pixels. We have an email address, which is panels two pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two pixels one. The TO is spelled out right in the middle and then the number one at gmail.com. And you could find us on YouTube. I already mentioned it before. Uh, you could search panels to pixels podcast. And if you're there, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. That will help us with our uh, viewership and listeners as well as uh, any video content that we actually do upload, because sometimes we do the occasional interview. We are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. That's Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out in words. And check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all. Wilhelm with Ben Beck, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them out all there. Coming up on the next episode will be episode, you'll either hear episode five of the of season three of the Umbrella Academy, which will be the kindest cut, and uh, or our native, latest episode of She-Hulk. Exactly. And where can listeners hear us elsewhere? Well, I send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do, and when I'm able to, I try to catch up on those. And so uh, our friends have got some podcasts they do, and I love to send them little critiques of the episode that I'm doing. Uh, oh, live they, steving. They like to call it li a live <laughs> steve. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to not feel egotistical or you know to to say it myself. I'll say it but, live uh, steving. Yeah. <laughs> where I, I, I record my thoughts on a voice message while I'm watching the episode for the first time. And then I send it in as, yeah. a, as a voicemail. So uh, yeah. you can hear my voice on uh, many of our friends podcasts there. A lot of us love what Steve does too, because it's pretty funny because a lot of us said, it's like, wow, Steve should really just do a podcast of him live steving <laughs> every movie known to man or show. It would be amazing. It's fun because we have fun listening to it and responding to it. So uh, I'm thinking about it. I'll still, I've got to figure out a format. I'll, I'm thinking about it. You got to so. do it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, where else can listeners hear me? Well, obviously you could hear me here on panels, the pixels, but you could also hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast. And that could be found on the pirate core entertainment network. And uh, therein we cover action, adventure, fantasy, thriller, suspense films, everything that gets your adrenaline going. So honestly, uh, the last episode I just published not too long ago would be Predator and Steve was on there. 
And it was so fun to listen yeah, to. Yeah, it was so fun to hang out and talk about Predator from 1987. I got it right, Steve. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we, we talk about Predator 1987. And soon after that, you'll get the movie Prey that came out on Hulu not too long ago as well. So we'll cover that. You could also hear me on the Podcastica Network. And therein, you could hear me on the Sandman cast. And that could be on the, be found on the podcast network. So our friend Jamie Dimmick and I just cover the Sandman that is on Netflix. So we're doing this episodically. So we're doing episode by episode weekly. So if you're already listening, thank you. Uh, if you're not, please tune in, listen to what we have to say. Uh, Jamie is more of the knowledgeable point of what's going on within the comics in comparison to the actual pixel. So I think that's pretty cool, but I've been reading. So I've been actually been reading the compendium. So nice. Listen to that. And, uh, Steve actually sends me back. He did a live Steve not too long ago, which is fun. Did another one for this latest episode, which was you know, weird. That was hard. It was hard to do this last episode. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you can check me out there. Uh, I can be found on podcastica as well uh, with the Sandman cast. So check that out. Just all you have to do is go to podcastica.com. And if you're there, please give reviews as well to give us a little feedback and have fun with it. So with that, this is the end of our episode. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.